I just think it's the worst disease in the world. I just, you know, you live your whole life, um, kids, grandkids, family, memories of who you are, and then everything, all of your neuronal network, all of the synapses that define you as a person and your entire life map is, is stolen. So I just find this disease to be a totally unacceptable part of aging, and I won't stop until we cure it, and it can be cured. We were looking for um, something we could do that was very important to society, something would ha which would have a major impact, positive impact on people, and we'd been looking for some time. There is Alzheimer's in my family, and um, my, my mother had it, and um, so I knew the trials that people go through and what an awful, awful disease it is. But that wasn't the principal reason. We didn't start out for that in mind. If we hadn't run into Rudy, we probably would not have started it. A few years ago, uh, I was visited by Jeff Morby and his wife Jackie, and uh, they were interested in what's happening in Alzheimer's research today. And I explained to them that we discovered the first Alzheimer's gene back in 1987, and then we were involved with co-discovering two more Alzheimer's genes in 95. So we've been directly involved with discovering three of the four known Alzheimer's genes. Uh, they asked a very uh, important question. They said, well, how much of the genetics or the inheritance of Alzheimer's do those four genes account? And I said, well, it's actually only 30%. There's 70% of it that we don't know. And we thought about it and said, wow, you know, the whole field, thousands of labs have been working on the information garnered from four genes that we, the geneticists, gave them over the last two decades. And it's only 30% of the genetic puzzle. And so we, we sat here in my office and said, you know, what if we had the other 70 percent? It could be argued that most of what we know about the disease right now and most of drug discovery going on has been made possible by the genes we already know about. Um, so here we had a situation where you had potential cures out there and at the same time not the money to fund them. Every new gene gives you a new window into the disease, a new idea about the cause, and a new idea for a novel therapy or, or drug for treating the disease. And so we said, okay, we'll fund it. And then we said, well, that's sort of silly to do a one-off project. Maybe we should think about doing something more. So we um, thought about a foundation, which seemed somewhat like an overwhelming task. Very audacious because what did we know about Alzheimer's? Uh, how could we find a cure? But we felt with Dr. Tansy's help we could do it. The thing that appealed to me was the idea that we could create a new nonprofit that would do things a little differently than what I understand many nonprofits do. Many nonprofits solicit applications for funding and they react to proposals from researchers around the globe who are looking for additional funding. I didn't want to do that. That would require creating a staff that was sufficiently um, knowledgeable about a disease to be able to say this one deserves support, this one doesn't. And it didn't seem to me we would do very well with that. The venture capital approach is not reactive. We don't sit at our desk and hope that the next founder of Google will send us a business plan. We're proactive. We go out and we look for and identify world-class talent in fields that we think are growth fields or, or fields that we'd like to invest in. So here where the load's lower, you still are getting more. It seemed to me that Rudy was clearly world-class in genetics.
When Cure Alzheimer's was started, we realized that we needed a roadmap. And the roadmap was going to end with novel drugs to treat the disease. So we realized we need a whole team of people. We needed people who understood basic science, translational or applied science, people who had their foot in the biotech and big pharma door, and of course clinicians who could help guide uh, clinical trials. So we put together a research consortium of um, uh, several scientists, and we, we really went after the best. I, on my own, was thinking about how to approach raising public awareness and money. And I actually got a um, trademark for the words curing Alzheimer's gene by gene. It's my future. Because I think this disease is about me and people of my generation. I'm a baby boomer. We're the, we're the biggest generation to hit the medical world in every part of our lives. And Rudy knew of my interest, and so did the head of his department. And we had, um, we had some meetings, and we agreed that it would be much more powerful if we worked together. And Jeff um, and Henry had already enlisted Rudy as the head of their research consortium, and they were operating under a name, I think it was the Alzheimer's Disease Research Association. And I said, if I join you, we'll have to change our name because I thought the real issue was curing Alzheimer's and generating excitement about that important work. So they agreed. I mean, the nice thing about what we do is we have very clear principles and a simple business model. It means that if you write a check, it goes directly to research. And many of the grants that we f use with our researchers don't even cover overhead. They just cover the actual time in the lab that people are spending seeking results. But anybody writing a check to the Cure Alzheimer's Fund is not even paying for the overhead staff. That money 100% is going to research. We have a process whereby our research consortium, uh, which is led by Rudy Tanzi, will make a proposal to us. And then we have a scientific advisory board of major scientists, including Paul Greengard, the Nobel Prize winner. And this scientific advisory board will look at this proposal and say, is it consistent with your roadmap, your objectives? Is it a good project? And if they sign off on it, then we as laymen will then fund it. What's beautiful is that, you know, Cure Alzheimer's didn't micromanage it. They didn't say, okay, now you, you have to work with this guy and you have to do this. They said, you know, you guys are all established. You're all great scientists. Like a venture capitalist, we're inviting in only the best proven people, okay? You work it out, but you let the collaborations within the consortium emerge on their own. It's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. Cure Alzheimer's Fund is funding research with no question some of the best researchers on Alzheimer's disease, which is higher risk but higher return if it succeeds and there are no other sources for this kind of funding. Venture capitalists take higher risk. That's how you get a higher return. And unfortunately, the National Institute of Health and the Alzheimer's Association do wonderful things, uh, but their, their research granting approach is so risk adverse that they're making progress very slowly. And I'm an impatient guy. We need to, we need to move quicker. Being a baby boomer, I'm the kind of leading edge of that, of that group just by age. And I powerfully remember being inoculated for polio. And my generation, I mean, my whole generation of school children got inoculated against polio in the schools. I don't think anybody's been inoculated en masse like that before or since. So 
I really have a dream. I would like my generation to now be inoculated against Alzheimer's disease. 